Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Uh, today we're going to have a look at MAC authentication, or what you might call dynamic MAC authentication. Uh, and so the way this works is very similar to 802.1x. Um, when a client plugs in, the switch reads the MAC address of that client and sends it to a radius server as the username and password. So just like .1x, the radius server then looks up the user account, says, yes, this MAC address is, is a user, and uh, sends back a, you know, accept or reject. And if it's accept, then you can also have it apply a particular VLAN um, and or an ACL onto that port dynamically. Um, uh, if there is a reject, then you can either drop their traffic and hardware or you can have them, you know, put into a sandbox or a guest VLAN, if you will, um, uh, for remediation. Or, you know, if it's guests in your environment, you only want them to have internet access, etc. So that, so that, so it works very similar to 802.1x in that case. So why would you use it? Well, 802.1x is definitely the superior method of, of uh, authentication, right? It's um, a MAC address can be spoofed quite easily. Uh, however, there's legacy clients that don't support 802.1x, or maybe in your environment, um, you don't want to have to go to the hassle of installing uh, 802.1x clients on all of your, or supplicants on all of your devices. Um, maybe, you know, you just want, you just want users to dynamically get put in the right VLAN based on who they are uh, or guests that come in to automatically get put in that guest VLAN and, and users. But, uh, you know, uh, it is not the safest method. And you can use this in conjunction with .1x. So you could say have .1x done first and if 802.1x, um, not if it fails, but if it doesn't have a client on the machine, then it will go back to MAC authentication and try the MAC. And if that fails, then you can have them put into a, a restricted VLAN or dropped. But so they can they can be used together in conjunction. But uh, in this case, we're just going to look at MAC authentication by itself. So let's have a look at how we do that. So the first thing we need to do from config T, we need to set up a radius server. So it's radius dash server host. Uh, 192.168.1.150 in my case. Um, we could set up an auth port, which I'm just going to use the standard and an accounting port. Again, these are just the standard ones, right? What everybody uses on Radius by default. Uh, and then we set up our key. Um, it doesn't really matter what this is, but the important thing is it has to match on both ends, right? The Radius server has to have the same authentication key as you do. Okay, so that's it. Set up my radius server exactly the same way I would do it for 802.1x. Um, and then we're going to set up AAA authentication. Uh, and it's for .1x. Uh, default radius. Um, so again, exactly the same way I would do this for .1x, right? Uh, okay, so then we're going to go into the authentication subcontext. Um, and so, you know, I have many, many things I can do here. Um, so we just need a couple of things. So we're going to, we need a default VLAN. So authentication default VLAN and give it a number. And so th what that does is when... <clears throat> When clients are waiting for authentication, they're going to be put into that default VLAN. So they're not going to sit in the switch default VLAN. They're going to be put in the authentication default VLAN until they get authenticated. So I'm going to say authentication default VLAN is 10. And then we're going to do a MAC authentication. Oops. Um, enable. OK, so we're going to turn on MAC authentication. Then we're going to do a MAC authentication uh, and we'll tell it what port we're turning it on for. So enable E one slash one slash. You could do an all here. You could do a range of ports. Doesn't really matter. Um, we can also do a password format. So by default, the username and password is going to get sent as one block. So it's so well, let's have a look at the options here. So MAC authentication. Uh, it's password dash format. 
and so by default it's going to send the Mac just as the you know as the 12 uh, hex characters all together you can send it as uh, uh, you know as dotted format you can set it as dash format however you want to do it um, and then You can also choose uppercase. So by default, it's sent as lowercase. So um, if you wanted to set up the username passwords as, as all lowercase or all uppercase, you can certainly do that. That's quite possible. Um, I am going to leave it alone. And the other option here we have is we could do a um, password-override and set, instead of sending the password as a as the MAC address, we can actually um, send a password itself. So uh, just depending on how you want to set up the clients on the Radius server. So in my case, I set up my client here as password one two three is what I set the password. And so that's so what it's going to do is it's going to send the username as the actual MAC, and it's going to send the password as password one two three for each one of those clients. It's not any more or less secure than MAC address. Frankly, MAC address is not a very secure method, but you know, e either way, you could do it either way. So, so that's the basis of that, right? So it's, we've enabled MAC authentication. We've told it what VLAN to put the ports in before it authenticates. Um, we've, we've, uh, and then we set the password override to password one, two, three. So, um, so that is all we need. We don't need to do anything on the physical ports. So then from a show perspective, let's see, we got a show Mac authentication uh, and I have a few options here, configuration. So we'll look at configuration, sessions, statistics, etc. So we'll look at config, right? So we see that it's enabled here, uh, .1x Mac authentication. So, so if I was running both .1x and Mac authentication, .1x would get done first. Um, if there was no EAPOL start frame from that client, then it would move on to Mac authentication. Default VLAN is 10, single untagged, um, that's important. So um, by default, it's only going to take the first client that authenticates will get put into an untagged VLAN. If you have multiple MAC addresses being learned in that port and they're in different VLANs, you're going to run into a problem with this default setting. So you can also do a uh, auth VLAN mode, multiple untagged, and then it will, it will actually... Um, put each one of those Macs in their own VLAN. So I know usually you can't have multiple untagged on an interface, but in this particular case, you can. So, so there is, if the radius server is giving back different VLAN numbers, each Mac address can be in a different VLAN untagged on the same port. So that's kind of a cool feature. You could also have a restricted VLAN uh, for, for clients that fail authentication if you wanted to. So there's kind of the sandbox VLAN. You could have a critical VLAN for for a timeout situation. Um, you, there's the action on what happens. So by default, it's going to block all the traffic, right? But yeah, you if you are using a restricted VLAN, you can have it dumped into that restricted VLAN rather than dropping the traffic. Um, you can turn off aging if you never want those authenticated Macs to age out. You can turn on a re-authentication period, uh, but it, by default, it's disabled here. Um, uh, password overrides enabled, .1x override is disabled. Um, here's the password format here. Um, okay, so uh, so those are those are mostly default settings, right? There's obviously many many things you can do. So let's look at sessions. Uh, so we'll go sessions all. So right now, I don't have a user account for the device that's plugged into that port right now. So this happens to be my laptop. It does not have an IP address but it's actually getting blocked. See, the authentication state is no here. So it is not uh, uh, authenticated and it's not accepted. So it's sitting in VLAN 4092. So basically it's dropping all my traffic and hardware. Um, if I was authenticated, it would put me into a dynamic VLAN based on the radius server or not, or it could put me into a restricted VLAN. But right now it's putting, it's dropping my traffic and hardware. So it's, it's saying that I'm in 4092, which doesn't go anywhere. So let me, uh, let me unplug my laptop, actually. So let's look at, uh, we'll do a session brief here. Um, basically the same thing. So .1x looks very similar, right? So um, number of attempted users is one. And remember, this is Mac authentication, right? So I could have, you know, 
20 users on a port, 20 different Macs, and all in different VLANs if that was the case. Um, so, But I've only got one, number of authorized is zero, number of denied is one, um, untagged VLAN type, so auth default VLAN, um, and I do not have a dynamic port ACL. Now you can also look in the log from a show log perspective. It's going to tell you that Mac authentication failed for my Mac on this port due to an invalid user. And then it's going to say um, the radius server rejected me on this port. So that's that's the reason that I failed authentication on that port. Okay, so let me unplug that. And we will move it over to a device that actually has a username and password on the radius server, hopefully. And hopefully I will see that authenticate and I do. Okay, so it's, now we see 1 slash 1 slash 11. Here's the MAC address. It doesn't have an IP because it hasn't got one from the DHCP server yet, but if it had one, it would show there. It's dynamically been put in VLAN 500. So it read that from the, uh, from the tunnel attribute um, on the radius server. And if you look in our guide, it will show you um, uh, uh, how to do that. And or there's a good white paper on the Brocade site to say how to set up um, tunnel attributes to, to make that happen. Um, so that's just something you set up on the radius server. Usually you, you create groups of users and create the, the tunnel attributes for the groups and then put users in the appropriate groups based on what VLAN you want them in. Um, anyway, we see the authentication state is yes. There's no ACL and aging is enabled. So eventually that will age out, but you can, you may want to disable that. Um, the other option is you could actually have it write those authenticated Macs into the startup configuration on a, on a schedule basis. So say every 10 minutes, it'll write those, those Macs. So the next time that, um, the system reboots, those Macs will be there. Yeah, there, I, I don't, I don't see a lot of reason to do that, but there may be circumstances where you need that to happen. Um, Okay, so that is uh, that is most of it. Uh, we can also look at stats. Uh, let's do stats all. So again, it will show you if you had multiple ports, it would tell you how many accepted and rejected sessions uh, you have per port, in progress sessions, attempted sessions, etc. Number of errors. Um, Okay. Oh, and uh, so there we see another, this is actually an access point that I have connected. So another uh, client has attempted to authenticate to that same uh, access point, And there we see it failing on the same interface as, um, as one that's accepted. So we can have multiple Macs on the same port at the same time. Some are authenticated, some aren't authenticated. That's perfectly okay. Okay. So that's it for Mac authentication. And, um, have a great day. Take care.